exactly gets transferred in swap lines and how does that work? On the overseas swap lines? Yeah, so like, you know, if, if say the US gives South Korea a swap line and then, you know, South Korea gives them one and they give them dollars. So what exactly gets transferred? Is it like proper US dollars? Is it like treasuries? What do they, what do they, what do they transfer there? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. The U.S. Treasury or the uh, Federal Reserve offers the South Korean officials, it's, it's South Korean Central Bank counterpart, uh, U.S. dollars on account with the Federal Reserve Bank of New York that's collateralized by local South Korean won. And, it, and the uh, Federal Reserve is protected because the currency rate is, 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 um, is agreed upon ahead of time. So the South, the South Korean Central Bank takes all of the currency risk onto itself. And the reason it will do that is because there are banks in South Korea who are begging them for U.S. dollars. Which again, you know, it shows us the, the, the global nature of the dollar system. Right. And so banks in South Korea are saying, look, we can't get US dollars from the Euro dollar system at a reasonable rate. You know, we're getting, we're getting price gouged here everywhere because they're so, they're so hard to come by. We need some help. And so what happens is the Fed, because of the domestic bank regulator, pushes this off on South Korea and says, here, here's a dollar swap line. You take care of it. And so that's what we, we suppose happens. The Fed swaps some dollars into South Korea. South Korea then auctions them off to South Korean banks, and everybody's happy, right? No, <laughs> that's not what actually happens. What actually happens is the South Korean Central Bank, or more so Europe and Japan, so the European or Central Bank gets these dollar auctions, and who shows up at these dollar auctions but American subsidiary or Japanese subsidiaries of American banks. So the American banks <laughs> end up bidding at these foreign overseas dollar swaps, and transferring these dollar balances back onto their domestic balance sheet. The so they're not really overseas at all. They're simply round tripping. And it's all another one of these smoke and mirrors thing because it sounds like, as we said before, South Korean banks are being, their, their dollar needs are being filled by these local auctions when it's not the case. And what are the reason is because these bank reserves really don't have much use in the wider Euro dollar system. They might be useful to, for domestic banks, right. which is why they're out there swapping them back into the United States. But they're not really useful for anybody else, which is why, despite these dollar swaps, whenever they're in use, you see nothing but dollar destruction everywhere. That was true in October, November, and December 2008, when, the, when these dollar swaps were first introduced. Actually, they were first introduced in December 2007, but in, in September 2008 forward, they were used heavily. The, the limits were taken off. And what happened? Did it stop the crisis? No, that was the worst part of the crisis. The worst part of the crisis was when the U.S. dollar swaps were at their highest, their absolute peak. Same thing somewhat in, 2000, in March 2020 when the dollar swap lines were open and they weren't used at all until, the, you know, I believe it was the week of March 25th after everything was over. So these, these dollar swap lines really don't do any good. They don't do anything other than they make it sound like the Federal Reserve is meeting a global need for dollars at arm's length, which is what they would, I mean, they'll emphasize the arm's length nature of the transaction, but it's really just, you know, it's right. all appearances. Yeah, it's just, you know, a round system, you know, the, the bank, buy, the U.S. bank buys it from, you know, the Jap from the Japanese and comes back to the U.S. and, you know, it, it, it's a mess. Well, in that case, it's the same <laughs> bank. It's, it'll be like, for example, in the Bank of Japan, what we can tell is, that, look, it's, it's a Japanese parent that bids at these Bank of Japan auctions for dollars and then transfers the dollars to their American subsidiary. So it, it never really even leaves the bank. Right. So it doesn't leave the country and doesn't even leave the bank. It's the same bank, you know. And so it, it's just, it's, 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 it's sort of just kind of, a, you know, spinning a fairy tale about the Fed printing money and because that's what the Fed wants. The Fed wants people to believe, believe. it's being liquid, it's, it's adding liquidity, it's adding dollars, it's printing money, it's, it's alleviating what obviously people can tell is a global problem by you know, uh, extending right. these swaps all over the world without ever admitting there's a global dollar market that must be the problem in the first place.